Hello, this is Brian Wells with the Department of Quantitative Health Sciences at the Cleveland Clinic, and I'm going to de demonstrate a tool that we've created uh, to allow you to make a free online clinical risk calculator uh, for many types of regression equations. The website for this tool is there at the center of the screen, makercalc.ccf.org. And if I click on that link, uh, that brings you to this login page where you can log in to create or edit a risk calculator. The first time you use this, there's a free registration uh, that you'll have to go through in the blue box there at the bottom of the screen. I'll go ahead and log in uh, with my account. So I enter my information and the page brings me to this opening screen that shows the calculators that I've created in the past. And there's an option here in the top left corner to create a new calculator here in the green box. Once you uh, click on create a new calculator it gives you an opportunity to enter uh, a lot of details about the calculator, a nickname to help you remember it by, a title uh, that will be posted at the web page. You can change uh, the email address uh, for the person to contact if folks have questions and there's even an option here to change uh, the logo. The default logo uh, says Cleveland Clinic at the top of the screen. If you're with another institution and you want to upload your own image file, uh, you can do that right here. So let me just enter some uh, basic details for a simple calculator I'm going to demonstrate that predicts uh, the risk of mortality after a myocardial infarction. This is a completely hypothetical data set uh, that I'm going to show you. So I just entered some descriptive characteristics for this. Our nickname is MI. It's uh, the title that I've given it is the Risk Calculator for Mortality after MI. Gave some contact information there. And then I come, come down a little bit further on the screen, and there's a place to enter your outcome. So our outcome here is actually uh, mortality. And in the example I'm going to show you, it'll be an eight-year uh, risk of mortality. So I've en entered that there in the outcome box. Now the model that I'm going to demonstrate is a Cox model. So if I go over here to the right, there's a drop-down box that allows you to enter the type of model that you're talking about. I'm going to use uh, what's called Cox failure. So instead of uh, showing the risk of survival, it's going to show the risk of uh, the outcome of interest. Um, this large box at the bottom of the screen is where you can enter a regression equation. You do have the option you could enter each predictor variable individually. Uh, along with, their, with the uh, coefficients, but uh, we find it's typically easier just to copy uh, the regression equation uh, from R uh, when we create our statistical models, which I'll demonstrate now. So let me um, go uh, to the software package R, and I'll show you this uh, hypothetical data set, which is called uh, mi.dat. just has 20 patients in it, has a handful of variables, uh, age, a continuous variable, race, gender, smoking, cholesterol, and our outcome is uh, mortality and then uh, time to event variable there. So I'm going to um, build a Cox uh, model using the function uh, CPH from the RMS package. So here's my Cox model using the function CPH. Uh, I modeled the uh, age, which is a continuous variable, is a restricted cubic spline, which is what we'll typically do. Uh, and I've got the other variables there and using the data set mi.dat. To pull out the regression equation, I'm going to use a function uh, for R called that we refer to as uh, pred.eq or prediction equation. And I went back to that initial maker calc uh, web screen and you can see here, uh, after th at the end of this first paragraph, uh, there's a link uh, to actually a text file that has the pred.eq uh, function. And I'm just going to source that uh, into R. Uh, so back in R, here's the code, just uh, using the function source and a path uh, to pred.eq. And then I'll use uh, this function to pull the regression equation out of my Cox model which I've done here. Here's the pred.eq equation for the Cox model called mi.cph. And for time, I did an eight-year uh, 
time to event, so 8 times 365 days in a year. And this function shows the regression equation with the restricted cubic splines already taken care of, as well as the base uh, incidence of, of the event, which we'll also have to enter into the risk calculator. So let me go back to the risk calculator page. And actually what we want, what we want to do is get is to highlight and copy this uh, regression equation from R, take that to the risk calculator page, and down here at the bottom of the screen where this uh, big empty box is below our outcome, just paste this regression equation in there, and there's a place for the base up here um, at the top, so I'll go back to R. And we'll highlight and copy uh, the base and take that back to the calculator. And I've pasted it into this little box over here uh, on the right side after it asks what type of model that you're looking at. And then uh, if we hit, uh, if I scroll down just a little bit, there's a box here to save changes and construct the calculator. And the risk calculator constructor reads that regression equation and it tries to identify the outcome and the predictor variables uh, that are in the equation. So you can see here the calculator identified age as a variable, race, uh, smoking, and cholesterol. The first column here shows the variables exactly as they are in the regression equation. The right column shows how the variables will be displayed on your actual um, web page. I'm not sure why it's given this extra information here to the right or like race, but I'll uh, clean this up just a little bit. You also have the opportunity to uh, put uh, an information message here uh, to give details about the variable. So like for cholesterol, if you wanted to specify what type of cholesterol or what units you're referring to, uh, you can do that in a box and that gives the, there's a help uh, text which I'll show you on the final calculator. In addition, um, variables like age, the risk calculator recognize that age is continuous. There's boxes over here to put some limits on your continuous variables so people can't put in wild values. I'll limit age to between 20 and 80. For uh, categorical variables like race, the risk calculator constructor recognized that there were three ca categories, Asian Pacific Islander, Caucasian, and Hispanic. It can't identify the, the reference category because that's not specifically listed in the equation. So I'll come in here and enter uh, African American by hand. And once again, the column on the left shows the category uh, as it was in the equation, and the column on the right shows how the category will be displayed in the actual uh, web page. And then if we scroll back down to the bottom of the screen, there's also an option here to put limits on our results. So we never like to uh, predict 0 or 100%. So I'll put in here 1 and 99 with a precision of zero decimal places. And if I click on Save Changes and construct the calculator at the bottom of the screen, voila, here's our calculator. Um, if I scroll down to the bottom, it shows uh, an approximation of what the calculator will look like uh, on the web. You can see our title, Mortality After MI, down here at the bottom, the outcome, eight-year mortality risk, and it's got the uh, input boxes uh, that folks can enter. If you click on these question marks, that shows you the help text we were talking about. For age, it says uh, please enter you know, a number between 20 and 80, which were the limits uh, that we put on this particular calculator. There's also a link above the calculator uh, for the actual, the actual URL for this specific calculator. Um, and also an opportunity to email uh, the calculator directly from here. There's also um, an ID for each calculator uh, to help you maintain your list. You can see up here at the top the ID for this particular calculator is 1DM2MG um, and that's another great way to identify the calculator from, from your own, uh, own list. But let me click on this actual URL and you can see what the calculator looks like on a regular web page and just type in a hypothetical patient, say it's 44 years old, Asian Pacific Islander, and has a cholesterol value of 200. Click on Calculate. 
and the calculator spits out an answer of less than 1%, so an eight-year mortality risk for this particular patient of less than 1%. There are a lot more um, complicated things that you can do, uh, creating uh, multiple outcomes in a grid type pattern and also uh, having different equations uh, depending on uh, characteristics that you're interested in. But that's just a simple way to, uh, to create a very plain calculator. Um, we have our own calculators from the Department of Quantitative Health Sciences at the Cleveland Clinic uh, posted on our website. You can check out those at rcalc.ccf.org, uh, which is here. And under the risk calculator paragraph there, you can click on make your own, which takes you back to that makercalc.ccf.org website that I showed you at the beginning. I would just like to take a second to uh, thank the risk calculator constructor team that consists of uh, Dr. Michael Catan, the head of QHS here at the Cleveland Clinic, uh, Greg Haggerty is our uh, programmer uh, who's done all the, the work behind the scenes. And then also Cheng Hong Yu and Susanna Airgain who work here in the department with us. Uh, feel free to contact us and we'll uh, try to make some more videos showing some more complicated uh, use of this tool. Thank you.